This is Ed McMahon, where we talk seven cents, and the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Suzanne Summers, and from Love, Sydney, little Kalina Kip. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here. idea getting this audience from an escort service. <laughs> You're not fooling me with that applause. You just can't wait till 1982 is over, right? <laughs> One more day. Hello, doctor. Hey, Chief. How are you Hi. Very well. Edward? Good evening, sir. I'm Johnny Carson, the world's second funniest man. I bow to the defensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Rams. <laughs> Oh, they're laughing tonight. The string, the string players are laughing. I've yeah. made a joke on this show. The string players never laugh because no. they're very serious, you know. But tonight they're laughing. Something I did wrong, guys. <laughs> anyway, this is the tonight show that comes to you from Burbank. One of the few things that does not come from Taiwan. <laughs> Gee, I hope this monologue works tonight. I got it by calling one of those toll-free eight hundred numbers. <laughs> The strings, by the way, are not for Suzanne Summers. They're for me during the monologue in case I need sympathy. Start up, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, if you weren't a grandfather, would I jump on you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aren't you doing a commercial somewhere tonight? For... <laughs> Have you ever seen Doc's commercials for what, Los Alamitos? Los Alamitos. Yes. Los Alamitos. Los Alamitos. Los Alamitos. It's Los, isn't it? Well, is it Los Angeles? <laughs> you have really salted it away, haven't you? <laughs> Must be paying big bucks to the IRS this year. It, yes, it would be Los, An uh, Los Angeles, if you pronounce it as the Spanish used to pronounce it, right? What do you think it should be? Los Alamitos. You're right. <laughs> No, I won't say it. I had something in my mind. There. <laughs> anyway, I understand what, what the, why, why he does those commercials is that Los Alamitos gives him free blankets, which he has made into those coats. <laughs> I don't know why I'm picking on him. I see you all over the place. What? During commercials. You and Doc are doing commercials. Why not? Last night, late, about 2.30 in the morning, I saw you come out in a, in a kimono doing a uh, thing for the amazing Ginsu knife. Right. <laughs> What? Why not? You own everything else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish I had the writers with me. <laughs> I've seen you on one the past couple of weeks, looking right into the camera and saying, like to me, yeah. you at home may already have won one million dollars. <laughs> And if you buy that, I have some DeLorean stock I'd like to buy. <laughs> no. no. That's true. You're actually going to give away a million big ones, huh? On this program, I didn't March know that. the 25th. Really? On this program, we're giving away the million dollars. Will a person who wins the million be here? We hope so. It's up to you. <laughs> If you don't does, care for him, he'll stay home. Does he Does he get the cash? Yes. I see. Well, that should be exciting. What day is that? March 25th. Well, mark that down. That'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> see, a million doesn't mean as much to you as it does to the others. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to miss you. Anyway, tomorrow is, uh... 
Tomorrow is New Year's Eve. I suppose you made your plans. Uh, here in Burbank, uh, New Year's Eve is not the festive occasion that they say in Times Square. What happens in Burbank, the senior citizens get together, uh, the main square, and they, see, uh, they sing all lang syne as they watch the giant digel tablet fall to the ground. <laughs> A little different. I hope 83 is better than 82. I really do. The way things are going. You know that this morning, Ronald Reagan just declared confetti a breakfast cereal? <laughs> we got... Okay. That was this morning? What? That was this morning? Yeah, this morning. <laughs> Why don't you help me when I need it? Don't do things in the morning. Yeah. Did you know there was an earthquake? <laughs> Get me anywhere. <laughs> you guys love this, don't you, when I die? <laughs> Did you know there was an earthquake last night in Malibu? Yeah. Must have been serious today. Inspectors found a crack in George Hamilton's profile. <laughs> and, uh, no, it was, it, the quake caused damage at the... At the Malibu... Malibu... <laughs> It caused a lot of damage at the Malibu... Mal <laughs> at the Malibu... <laughs> what can I say? At the Malibu... <laughs> at the Museum of Fine Arts in Malibu. <laughs> it caused it a lot... <laughs> it caused a lot of damage there. The statue of Christy Brinkley was destroyed. It was a terrible thing. <laughs> well, let's see what else is happen happening in the news. Um, President Reagan, I guess, is in Palm Springs. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. And he's spending the vacation down there. And matter of fact, he met with uh, two unemployed citizens today of Palm Springs. Gerald Ford and Lawrence Welk. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tough down there. Uh, did you read in the paper today that ABC, as you know, has the Olympics this year? in 1980, in 84, I guess, and they took out a $200 million insurance policy, I guess with Lloyd's of London, in case something happens and they couldn't show the program, and they're insured against loss. $200 million policy, and they also insured Howard Cosell's tongue for fire and theft. <laughs> anyway, we have a good show for you tonight. You guys are staying for the whole show? Usually they play for who's ever here, and then they split to another gig. Uh, Suzanne, of course, you know, uh, she is married to uh, Alan Hamill, who, among other things, used to have his own television show and is the spokesman for Alpha Beta Markets uh, around the country. As a matter of fact, I understand on their wedding night, Alan said to Suzanne, was it, was it good for you? And she said, yes. And Alan said, tell a friend. <laughs> Don't know whether it's true. Anyway, we do have an exciting show for you. Uh, stay tuned. Freddie de Cordova still has 55 minutes to find something exciting. <laughs> But uh, we do, and we have Suzanne Summers, an right. adorable little girl from Love, Sydney, Kalina Kiff, who is amazing. So thank you for coming, and we'll be back. <laughs> What's the secret of saving your lips from the wind? My lips are sealed to chapstick. What stops the cold from letting the chapping begin? My lips are sealed with chapstick. With chapstick lip balm, your lips are sealed. Sealed with emollients that seal moisture in, the weather out. Sealed against chapping, drying, and cracking in any weather, any time of year. There's even a sunscreen. My lips are sealed with chapstick. Bannon Sportswear, Bannon Dresswear, Bannon. With every link and cotton to cashmere, if you care, you'll bother. Don't wear one without the other. Ban roll on. It's like an invisible layer of protection against wetness between you and your clothes. It helps stop wetness better than any leading spray. If you care, you'll bother. Don't wear one without the other. Ban roll on. You and your clothes can depend on it. It was silly, but I can't get words out right. Malabubu. I like Malabubu. I couldn't say it. You want to see something funny? A guy sent me by the name of Steve. Stephen Kalmar. Works for Dean Whitter, I guess, out here. 
And he said, do you remember the rain we had a few days ago? Mm -hmm. I guess it was now about a week and a half in Los Angeles. This is what he found on his windshield in Beverly Hills. It was a ticket, but thoughtfully wrapped in plastic. <laughs> oh. It was a rainy day. Only in oh, Beverly Hills would they wrap, would they wrap your ticket for you and oh, put it under the windshield. Nice. Yes. Have a nice day. Is that great? <laughs> Wrapped in plastic. I've got a funny card here from uh, the, uh, the Junkers from uh, North, North Muskegon, uh, Michigan. Well, yeah. yeah. They have a, a, a dog, 11 years old, I don't know if you can, this will show up. The dog watches The Tonight Show. I don't have any caption to go with this. <laughs> See, I'm actually in the picture there. Yeah, the dog. Yeah. Are you waiting for the Alpo commercial? Uh, probably, <laughs> yes. You're hot tonight. Really good. Huh. It's probably because you're going out tomorrow to all those parties. I'm going to several parties, yes. At invitations to three different parties. Well, four, but one I cannot make. <laughs> <laughs> like you kid around like you know you always pull that thing you'll be at Wink Martindale you know you turned on more things than you go to I tell the truth how many parties were you invited to tomorrow night for New Year's Eve the ab absolute truth well um, they're probably still coming in I'm, uh, <laughs> there was one uh, oh, no. really a biggie well I think it was just one you're going to oh. are you going to show up no I'm uh, got a, going over to Piazadora's <laughs> They're having a stretching party over there. <laughs> going to stretch her. Uh, <coughs> this is this year's copy. Well, it's January 1983. I guess it would be next year's copy, right? Yes. They always come out a month early. <laughs> so they have time to sell them through the following month. That's right. This is uh, January. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're going to win the million dollars and you're <laughs> And you've got a lock on it already? Anyway, Esquire, I guess every year, gives out what they, what they feel are the most dubious achievements yeah. of all time. Would you like to see some of them? These are for real. I'm not making these up. Most dubious achievement in art. Went, now, this is for real. He went to sculptor Dwight Cobb, who crafted a chopped liver statue of Brooke Shields. <laughs> That is a dubious achievement. This is, you, you won't see this, but it is. there is a dog here. It's, it's not a very good reproduction, but can you tell it is a, no, you can a see little it. dog? Sure. The most dubious achievement at parties happened in Hewlett, Long Island, where a 13-year-old female mutt named Greggy Lumplup Taylor was thrown a bark mitzvah. <laughs> true, this is true, to which 400 pets were invited. 13-year-old bar, a bark mitzvah. Bark mitzvah. This is, again, from Esquire. A dubious achievement was awarded to Deborah Sue Moffat, this year's Miss America, when it was discovered she had a nose job in 1980. That's the same girl. Wow. Did you know that? Mm. We're not trying to put Miss Moffat down. This is just what Esquire yeah. published. The most dubious achievement in scouting went to 26-year-old Alicia Greek Alexander of Montgomery, Alabama, a former Girl Scout leader who admitted she stole $720 in cookie money. Excuse me, I'll get these smarter. Another dubious achievement award went to the Reverend Sun Myung Moon, who one night at Madison Square Garden married 2,075 couples, many of them strangers to each other. He That's did that. true. That they had not met until the, until the wedding. The most dubious achievement in inventions was awarded to Suzuki Mizono, a Japanese robot designer who built a full-size replica of Marilyn Monroe that smiles, breathes as its breasts gently heave, and sings a love song. <laughs> A dubious achievement award presented to former Minnesota twin Frank, is it Quillacy? Who raised his batting average to .370 by changing his stance so he could see around his nose. <laughs> I think... <laughs> Dubious achievement. A dubious achievement award went to the topless bathing suit. That's for real. And to designer John Fredericks for creating a hat with flaps to cover a girl 
in a topless bathing suit. <laughs> now, we looked around and our found staff. out our staff and found out some achievements that are really dubious that Esquire didn't cover. For example, the most dubious achievement in national defense was this invention, the MX missile toupee. <laughs> The most dubious achievement in sports medicine went to the Chicago Cubs, who hired a full-time baseball proctologist. <laughs> the most dubious achievement in weddings went to this bride and groom, who hired six Eureka vacuum salesmen to suck rice off them after the ceremony. <laughs> The most dubious achievement in gift-giving went to Secretary of the Interior, James Watt, who sent this to his wife last Valentine's Day, the bald eagle gram. <laughs> I think you're probably right. I'll go with you on that. The most dubious achievement in television commercials was this one, a Coppertone ad featuring an eight-year-old child and a dog with rabies. <laughs> The most dubious achievement in military etiquette went to Marine Corporal Audie Smurphy, seen here demonstrating his new handshake, the low five. <laughs> the most dubious achievement in ballpark vending went to this man who for, tw who for 25 cents sells penis to old people. For another 10 cents, he'll pass his teeth down the aisle so they can chew them. <laughs> The most dubious achievement in religion went to these desperate women who go outside every day at noon and pray for nude skydivers. <laughs> the most dubious achievement in aviation went to these two flight engineers seen here demonstrating their latest invention, airsick pants. <laughs> The most dubious achievement in stupidity went to these men who threw a bachelor party in a motel and brought along eight old oars. <laughs> that dubious, dubious achievement. <laughs> we have with us tonight Suzanne Summers, who's going to perform Woo! Kalina Kip. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. With some contests, you have to wait so long to find out if you won, you wonder whether anyone even won at all. Well, at Publishers Clearinghouse, we want you to know. And on March 15th, we're going to announce it on TV. Who won a dream house? Who won a luxury car? Who won our incredible super prize? And our quarter of a million dollar winner is... So watch your mail for the new Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes and enter. We want to make you a winner. Now the most important message of all, from Burger King. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. May your days be bright. From now on, your troubles will be out of sight. So have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Merry Christmas, McDonald's. Happy New Year. Suzanne Summers will be out in a little while. My uh, first guest tonight is an amazing youngster. Um, she plays um, Patty in the television series Love, Sydney" with Tony Randall on Saturday nights at 9.30 right here on NBC. I understand in March the show is going to be seen at a different time. It's a good show, and she's a most talented actress. And I'm not sure of her age. She's either six or seven. But we'll find out. Would you welcome Kalina Kiff. I have a footstool for you coming out right now. Okay? Thank you. Okay. How are you? Fine, thank you. I didn't know how old you were. How old now? Eight. All of eight, huh? Yeah. You're looking very nice. Thank you. I saw you in the makeup getting your hair done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you like it? Do you wear it normally in braids like that? Um, no, not exactly, because my mom doesn't know how to do it. Ah. <laughs> it's tough to braid your hair yourself, isn't it? You really have to have a friend or your mom do that. Did you have a nice birthday? Yes, I did. <laughs> you were here before my birthday last time, weren't you? Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful birthday. When yeah. is your birthday? I didn't really ask you. Same time as yours. We are. That's right. We're October. 
the 23rd. Right. I'd forgotten that. You've got a very good memory. <laughs> What'd you do on your birthday? Um, went to FAO Schwartz. Wow. Uh, did you get to pick out something? Yeah. What'd you pick out? I picked out some doll furniture. Some doll furniture? You already have a doll, huh? Right. You got a name for the doll? Well, I have lots of dolls. Yeah. Do they do things? Some of them cry and some of them burp? No, and... I just have regular Barbie dolls. Just regular Barbie dolls. Yeah. <laughs> Last time you were here, you were talking about your mother was going to have, have, a, going to have a baby. Um, two your... months before she, um, it was born, I decided that I wanted a sister more. And I got a sister. Ah, I think you said you wanted a brother originally. Yeah, but changed I your changed your mind? mind right before she was born. And you got a sister. <laughs> you must have had some influence or something like that. <laughs> so you got a baby sister. Yep. Is she cute? Yeah. Yeah. What's her name? Juanita. Oh, that's a pretty name. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, she's only what? How old now? Two months. Two months. So well, you don't... Tuesday she'll be two months. Yeah. No, so you don't really get a chance to, to play with her yet, do you? Mm. Well, yeah, I play with her some. Yeah? What do you like about her most? Well, she's funny. She's funny? <laughs> she only knows two tricks, though. Well, that, that's a trick a month when you think about it. That's, that's, that's pretty good. What, what are the two tricks? What can, can she do? She can laugh really? and she can roll over. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you help change the diapers at all? Yeah. Have you learning that? Mm -hmm. That's good experience because when you become a mother, you have to know all those things, don't you? Right. Why did you change your mind and, and want a, a baby sister instead of a baby brother? I don't know. I just changed my mind. Just... I thought about it a while and I said it to myself, a brother would be more trouble than a sister. <laughs> Why do you think a brother would be more trouble than a baby sister? Well, because mostly a bigger sister and a younger brother fight more than a bigger sister and a younger si sister. You think so, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, would you like to have a baby brother, though, sometime? Sometime. Yeah. Did your mother explain to you all about mm -hmm. babies being born and so forth? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't there, though, mm -hmm. huh? But you went to see her in the hospital, mm -hmm. right? No. Oh, you I was in New York. Oh, that's, you were in New York working, I suppose, right? She was born nine days before she was supposed to. Really? Was this what they call a, a cesarean? Yeah, I was too, one too. Were you a cesarean child too? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So you do know something about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you look far enough ahead to think of being a mother yourself someday no. and having having a child? Mm, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think you'd like to? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Does the idea of marriage bother you? No. Oh. <laughs> so how's the show going? Fine, thank you. Uh huh. How far are you ahead now in your in your schedule? Um. Well, I'm not exactly sure when we're going back, but mm -hmm. I think it's either this coming Thursday or next Thursday. Right. They haven't told you yet. Right. Okay, we're going to cut away. We have to do a commercial. You know all about those, don't you? Mm -hmm. Then we'll come back and talk some more, okay? Okay, okay we'll be right back. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yeah. this headache. And the doctor said no aspirin. I guess I'll take Tylenol. Take three. Anison three. It's 100% aspirin free. I didn't know Anison three is aspirin free. Mm -hmm. I've got a choice. Yeah. Right. Like Tylenol, Anison 3 is 100% aspirin-free and contains the most effective aspirin-free pain reliever you can buy. I feel fit. And no more headache. What was that pain reliever you gave me? Anison 3. Take 3. Anison 3. 100% aspirin-free. Now what do you think? Well, uh, we're even having waffles for breakfast. Waffles? That's not how Mommy makes them. Daddy's making their own way. No, everything's fine, hon. Gotta go. Love ya. <laughs> Here's how Molly makes them. Aunt Jemima waffles. Crispy outside, tender inside. Good old-fashioned waffles. Just like Mommy makes. Good, huh? <laughs> We're uh, talking with uh, Helena Kip. Do you like music? Do you collect the records at all? Mm, no, not exactly, but I do listen to records. You do listen to records, yeah. Um, 
I was going to ask you a question. Did you, I asked you what you got for your birthday. What did you get for Christmas you liked best? Well, from our director and our chief writer, I got a Casio Casatone electric piano. Oh, did you, electric piano. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you learn to play it? Sort of. Yeah, sort of. What did they, was it numbers or did they put colors um, on it? And... No, it's just a keyboard. Just a keyboard. Okay. Now, you, uh, you live here in California, but you, you work in New York. Right. Do you, do you prefer one to the other? Well, I like them both a lot, except yeah. I prefer California. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because that's where all my friends are, and yeah. I only have one friend that's in New York. It's nice to have friends, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned you, you wanted a baby sister instead of a baby brother. Do you have any friends who are, who are boys? Some. Yeah? How do you get along with them? So, so. <laughs> Are they older or, or younger? One of them. Uh, well, the ones in school I don't get along with, but also I have an, a good friend. You see, my mom's friends with his mom. Oh, I He's see. a real nice kid. Well, you'll find out as you, you'll find out as you get older, you'll have more of attraction for boys. Mm-hmm. You'll find out they're pretty pretty interesting. <laughs> we do the same thing with girls. There's a certain age that you find out they're pretty interesting people. <laughs> Last time. <laughs> Last time you were here, you told me, if I remember, that you weren't sure you wanted to be an actress all the time, right? Well, I don't know what's going to happen when I grow up, but right. I really want to be a dancer. Really? What kind of a dancer? Well... Ballet-type dancer? Tap dancer? Well, I like tap, I like jazz, I like rock, I like ballet. Right. But n- new wave's not really the kind of stuff I like. New wave, you don't dig, huh? Just good old-fashioned... Dancing. Do you right. take lessons? No. Not yet. Okay. Uh, we have a, uh, an, a little film clip here from one of the episodes. I don't know which particular show this is. Do you know which, what we're going to see tonight? Well, I know the clipping, but I can't remember which show it which was show? because it was last year. Right. Is this with you and, uh, yeah. and Tony? Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's a little uh, film clip from uh, Love, Sydney with Kalina and Tony. Sydney, what are you doing? I'm working, sweetheart. Are you working hard? Yes, sweetheart, very hard. Am I annoying you? No, sweetheart. I can draw Hong Kong all over again. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Can I ask you something? No, sweetheart. I'm working. What is it? What do you want to know? If Mommy says yes, can I stay home from school Wednesday? No. Why? Well... I'm supposed to get up in front of class and talk about Columbus. Everyone's going to laugh at me. No, nobody's going to laugh at you. You just do your best and you'll be fine. But I don't know anything about Columbus. Well, you've come to an expert, Columbus. Columbus was, um, he was an Italian sailor. He was born in Genoa. He discovered America in 1492. That's all you got to know. You you got it? No, Timmy. I'm talking about Columbus, Ohio. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's a good scene. I told you before, you're a very good actress. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, you go to many movies? Some. Yeah, what do you like? What was your best picture you saw this year? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a guess. E.T. Right. Yeah. That's very popular. I bet you went more than once, didn't you? Right. How many times? Seven. Seven? <laughs> you really like it that much? Mm-hmm. I have seen it seven times in New York and in the same theater. <laughs> yeah? What is it about that, that, that you like so much? Well, I like E.T. a lot. Yeah. He's like a best friend to me. Isn't that strange? That's the way everybody seemed to, to think about that picture. And also, there's only two people that I know have seen it as many times or more. Who's that? I don't know anybody well, outside of you that you... <laughs> Um, my friend in school, she's seen it seven times like me. Mm-hmm. And also our director's son has seen it nine times. Right. I was going to ask you what you did when you weren't working, but obviously you go to, you go to movies and see no. each other. No. What else do you do? Um, well, I play with my friend as much as I can. Right. Because she took up ice skating now. Well, she did. hmm And she wants to be a champion skater when she grows up. You have to start very young. Mm-hmm. Be a champion skater. She started about a year and a half ago. Well, I wish her good luck. 
Good. I thank you for coming tonight. It's always fun to talk with you. Will you come back and visit again when you're out here? Sure. Okay, would you give our best to Tony? Say hello for us? And we'll look for you on Love, Sydney. Okay. Okay, thank you, Kalina. Good night. You know, she's a nice child. You know what she said to me? She says, have a nice New Year, which you didn't hear. Which that's I didn't something. think to say to her. No. She thought about it. Well, how about remembering that you shared the same birthday? I mean, that's right. Wonderful. I forgot that. Yeah. October the 23rd. All right. We'll Lovely go. Suzanne day. Summers is with us tonight in performance. <laughs> a child's joy. A mother's love. A friend's devotion. In this season of peace, share the magic with your family. Steven Spielberg's E.T., the extraterrestrial, from Universal Pictures, rated PG. Now play at a theater near you. Check local newspapers for details. Is that the new publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes you just got? Shh. How come you haven't sent it in? Intelligent people don't enter contests. That's what we used to think. Contests? They're probably rigged. That's what I used to think. <laughs> There's got to be a catch. That's what we used to think. You know that new publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes you just got? What's your reason for not sending it in? Lots of clearinghouse winners used to think that, too. Come on, send it in. Okay, strings. Time to earn the money. Uh, my next guest is a beautiful and talented entertainer. She will be appearing in Atlantic City at the Sands Hotel January 28th and 29th. And this coming Monday night, she has a special on, as they say, another network entitled Suzanne Summers and 10,000 GIs. She can do a number tonight from a very famous uh, Broadway play called show, actually, Guys and Dolls. And I think it's only the second time they've allowed this number to be performed on television. Would you welcome, please, Suzanne Summers. <laughs>
boys love the lyrics to that song. Yes. What? Yeah. That's a nice lilt. Doesn't it, it though? Yes. Suzanne's going to be back in a moment. We have to do a commercial. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. Stay right where you are, folks. You may be the winner of one million dollars. This is Ed McMahon. I urge you to watch your mail for a million dollar message from me. Look for the envelope with my name and your name on it from American Family Publishers. If you receive this envelope, you may already be the winner of one million dollars. I will personally award this giant prize. So look for your one million dollar envelope this week. Be sure it's from American Family Publishers. It could make you a millionaire. This is the last acid indigestion you'll ever treat with a spoon. Because all the acid neutralization in a spoon of regular Maalox or Mylanta now is concentrated in a brand new tablet. New Tums EX. Tums EX. EX stands for extra strength. Liquid strength. Without the spoon. Extra strength. Tums EX. Tums EX. And once again, here is Suzanne Summers. Suzanne. Oh, yes. Costumes all over the place. Mini costumes. You look wonderful. That's a fine number. Thank you. It's kind of a shock to your system, I think. No, running. you're, a, as I used to say, a striking figure of a woman. <laughs> yes, you are. Now, Thanks, I want to find out the first thing I noticed, because when somebody performs on this show, we do it live. A lot of shows, you know, singers pre-record, and they come out and they go through the lyrics. You're working live. And immediately I said, where are you mic'd? Because we had no <laughs> overhead mic. You were wearing not the, 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 a voluminous costume. Is that the right word, Ed? Yes, voluminous. Yes, voluminous. <laughs> Couldn't you, you have... see it? No. No. Oh, I had a radio pack in the back of that corset. It adds about a couple inches to the back of you. I thought in other words, you... it's a transmitter that you yeah. have to wear in the back, and then the microphone is hidden... It's hidden down in the bus line. Well, it works very well. <laughs> the Happy hills microphone. are alive with the sound of music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I started, and I was into it before I realized well, what I was saying. As long as they're singing. Have you... <laughs> Have you ever had a power failure while you're using that? Yeah. No, I'm serious. No, you know what I'm saying. They, they're very reliable. But sometimes I have seen shows where the yeah. singers are out there. I know they use them in Las Vegas all the time. On your show? Yeah, you did one time. Yeah. We did have yeah. them. I, I know, think it was because of all the electronic equipment we have in the well, studio. Well, I think I was, I was the first one who ever talked Fred into using a radio mic on the show. Yeah, I think. and it worked very well. And uh, he did a lot of I Told You So's after. Yeah. But there's some numbers. I do a production show when I'm doing my knuckle go. back, and some, some numbers you just can't hold a microphone. Absolutely. The problem with this thing is I wear it... <laughs> 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 I wear it under through the whole act, right. you know, so it makes all the costumes fit a little strangely. Right. Well, but, it's not. Anyway, you just finished your special in Germany with a lot of the uh, servicemen stationed over there. Yes. And quite an experience, I would assume. Yeah, we, we, it's called Suzanne Summers and 10,000 GIs. Actually, somewhere from 30 to 50,000 showed up, and that was really overwhelming. Best audiences in the world. Ah, oh, they were great. And, you know, we started the show with... I brought a chorus line of the most beautiful, leggiest girl dancers. Some of them were on the Well, show these tonight. girls are not yes. exactly. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you wouldn't throw them out, huh? No. <laughs> and um, when you walk out in front of thirty to 50,000 soldiers with a chorus line of, of beautiful girls all tap dancing, they went crazy. Well, I suppose the moat and the barbed wire helped some <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in the service, and those shows would come over, and the girls would be on the plane, and the guys would... <laughs> I know. I know. What, what branch of the service were you in? I was in the Navy, which was difficult when they brought the shows to land. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> who, else we, in the, who else is in the show with you? Uh, Jonathan Winters. Oh, he's um, one of my favorites. Yeah, he is wonderful. And ask that we do not write anything for him. He, he works best impromptu, always has. Yeah, he does. He... As long as I wasn't singing, he was free to walk out on stage anytime he wants and breaks in. And he does. And it, and it yeah. was real nice. You know, I learned, I've learned so much from you. <laughs> but over really? the years, you know, I've been doing this. <laughs> but doing this show for so <laughs> Shall we tell? No, no. <laughs> tell, t t tell a friend. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would. <laughs> um, I forgot. I got <laughs> flustered and forgot. Oh, I know. Be doing your show for the past 12 years, right. I've really learned the art of ad-libbing from you, really. Thank you. Because there's no, 
There's no script here. This right. is what happens. So, it's better to get out sometimes and just feel the audience and have a yeah, good time with it. Yeah, I had Susan Anton on the show, and um, oh, she's so gorgeous. And but I must say, I looked rather nice myself well, when it, I was standing yes. out there. She walked out. It's the first time in my life I've ever felt like olive oil. I'm not. She's kidding. rather tall. First of all, she is tall. I mean, she's about a foot taller than I am. Well. White, well, she had heels on. Like... Six feet without her shoes. You put on high heels. I'm five five. Yeah, well, she could be that. Yeah, yeah. And Dudley Moore was over with us, and right. um, he's a happy fellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that tends to do it. That yes. brings on happiness real quick. <laughs> they're, they're, they said their theme song is "I've Got You Under My Chin." <laughs> yeah. Before you do another number, I don't want to get too far behind. Have you made any New Year's resolutions at all? Or do you do that? Well, I, I, d I decided I'm going to give up bowling. Give up bowling? That's, that's awfully tough to break that habit. You really have to. You have to just bowl one frame and then just cut down day by day. <laughs> to knock off bowling cold turkey is, is murder. You go, bowl, go out and bowl four frames and then one frame. And three. That's right. Tough, tough. Well, you know, I just decided to go for it. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Freddie is, Freddie is, oh, is he? yeah, giving me a cue because I would love to see you perform again. Okay. You all set? I Here's see Suzanne. You now. Okay. that song and you do it beautifully well thank you i wanted to tell you something uh, about giving up bowling uh, do you know jp morgan sure i was talking to her once she was eating these rice cakes and i said why are you eating these rice cakes she says because i gave up meat i said what else have you given up she said i gave up sex i said why'd you do that 
She said, because it wouldn't mean anything if I gave up water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> she has a point. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's nice to have you here. This is, this is the first time strings have stayed the entire show. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Usually the performer works in the middle of the strings, put the bows in their pants, and go right out the door. <laughs> this time they're here for the whole show. Have you show. tried it? <laughs> Anyway, the special is on uh, Monday night. Monday night. On another network, as they yes. say. And it's pretty easy to find because there are only three major networks. And That's true. If and it's, it's not here, it's got to be one of the other two, and we're not supposed to mention it. Yeah. But not ABC. No. <laughs> we didn't mention it, did we? We didn't. We got a we point didn't. there. It's a wonderful show. I'm real proud of it. Good. I'll tune in. Thank you. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Sue Green is lying. I can't play another set. My uh, head is aching. I can't tell them I have hemorrhoids. Honey, try Tronolane. It works better than Preparation H. Clinical testing proves it. Tronolane does work better. It not only reduces swelling, it relieves pain better, itching better, with a hospital-used medicine Preparation H just doesn't have. Can we play the next set? My headache is better. Switch to the better relief of Tronolane in cream or suppositories. You mean you have an Atari video game system, but not Atari Missile Command? Well, then you must have Defender. What about Star Raiders? Or Yars Revenge? You gotta have Berserk, right? And Atari Space Invaders, a classic. You don't. An Atari system without those games? That's like having a stereo with no hit records. Well, the old clock on the wall. What did uh, what did you get for Christmas? What did Alan get you for Christmas? I was going to ask you. I forgot. Give me you... a sweatshirt. Oh, come on. Come on. He doesn't like Christmas. So he gave me a sweatshirt. He doesn't Mr. Wonderful. like... <laughs> Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Mr. Wonderful gave... Right, and an alpha beta gift coupon. Oh, hi. Huh. <laughs> Go the... buy all the groceries you want, Susan. Well, I hope it's for the express lane so you can get right out. I yes. mean, he really bought you a sweatshirt. It was a nice sweatshirt. Well, it should be. I yeah, mean, yeah. Did you buy him something? Well, he doesn't like Christmas. Did you get him anything? I, I didn't do much better. I got him um, flannel pajamas. <laughs> what a wonderful couple. <laughs> yes, are we? A sweatshirt and flannel pajamas. <laughs> we didn't do much about Christmas. What did you get? I got... Um... I got a jacket, a nice warm jacket. That's exciting. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and an electric blanket. Yeah. Huh. A little controls. cold at night? Do it control. Yeah. Well, it has been snowing. electric blanket. Well, yeah. you know, you can always use an extra electric blanket. Yeah. You never wear there. You never know. Actually, I had a kerosene blanket for a year, <laughs> but it was so hot. Thank you for coming Monday night. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow night for our special live New Year's Eve party tomorrow night with Tina Turner will be here, uh, Bill Maher, comedian, El Flamo. El Flamo will be here. Lots of things. Good night. <laughs>